PBR materials, or physically based rendering materials, are a method to create realistic surfaces in computer graphics. They simulate how light interacts with different materials, like metal, wood, or glass. With PBR, objects look correct in any lighting, whether it's the sun or a lamp. That's why PBR is the standard way to make realistic materials in games, films, and 3D art. To apply PBR materials, we need texture maps. A texture map is an image data that defines how a surface should look and how it interacts with light. Some texture maps add visual details like scratches or bumps, while others control physical behavior of the surface like how shiny or metallic it is. In PBR materials, the most common texture maps are base color, roughness, metallic, normal, displacement, and ambient occlusion maps. In this tutorial, we'll explore texture maps, what they are, how they affect a surface, and how to use them in Blender. First, let's download some free PBR texture maps from the web. There are many websites where you can find them for free. In this tutorial, I'll download a paving stone texture from ambientcg.com. You can find the download link in the video description. You can download PBR textures in JPEG or PNG format. For the best quality and reliable results, PNG is the better choice. JPEG can still be used when file size is important for performance. The resolution of your texture maps also matters. For games and animation, 2K is usually enough. But for close-up renders or detailed product shots, 4K textures will give you the best results. Since this is for a tutorial, I'll use 4K resolution and PNG format to get the highest quality results. Once the download is finished, make sure to extract the zip file before using the textures. Let's start by opening a new Blender file. Press Shift A and add a plane to the scene. Next, press Z and switch to Material Preview mode so we can see the materials in real time. At the bottom of the screen, change the Timeline Editor to the Shader Editor. Then, click New to create a new material for the plane and name it Paving Stones. As you can see, a principled shader node has been added automatically. This node represents the material we just created. The principled shader node has several input sockets that control different properties of the material. For example, the base color input determines the color and pattern of the material. The roughness input controls how shiny or matte the surface appears. It's important to understand what texture maps do. For example, the roughness slider controls the overall shininess or matteness of the material. However, it cannot tell which parts of the surface should be shiny and which parts should be matte. This is why we need a roughness map. By using a texture map, we can control the roughness for different areas of the material, making it look much more realistic. Now, let's connect the texture maps we downloaded to the principal shader to create our realistic PBR material. The first texture map is the color map, also called the diffuse map. This map defines the main color and pattern of the material. It controls what the surface actually looks like without affecting how light interacts with it. In short, the color map gives the material its basic appearance. To connect the color map to the principal shader, first add an image texture node by pressing Shift A. Click Open and select your downloaded color or diffuse map. Then, connect the color output to the base color input of the principal shader. Once connected, you will see the material's color and pattern appear on the plane in Material Preview mode. To control how a texture is placed on the model, we use two nodes, Texture Coordinate and Mapping nodes. The Texture Coordinate node decides where the texture comes from, like UVs or object space. The Mapping node allows us to move, rotate, or scale the texture on the surface. To connect these nodes, first add a Texture Coordinate and a Mapping node. Then, Link the texture coordinate to the mapping node using UV coordinates and connect the mapping node to the image texture. This way, the texture placement on the model will be fully controlled by these nodes. You can control the location, rotation, and scale of the texture maps. Next, let's add the roughness map. The roughness map is a black and white image that controls how shiny or matte the surface island. White areas mean fully matte, black areas mean fully reflective, and gray tones create values in between. Without a roughness map, the slider affects the whole surface the same way. With the map, different areas get different values, so some parts look smoother and others look rougher. To use it, just add an image texture node, open the roughness map, and connect it to the roughness input of the principled shader.
When adding the image texture for the roughness map, make sure to set the color space to non-color. This is because the map carries data, not actual colors, and using non-color ensures Blender reads the values correctly. Also, don't forget to connect the vector input of the roughness map to the mapping node output. This ensures all your textures are aligned and mapped correctly on the model. You can select the roughness map and press M to temporarily disable it, then press M again to enable it back. This way, you can clearly see how the roughness map controls the surface's shine and reflections. To fine-tune the roughness map, you can add a color ramp node between the image texture and the roughness input. By moving the black and white sliders on the color ramp, you control how shiny or matte the surface appears. Sliding black to the right makes the material overall shinier, while moving white to the left makes it more matte. Next, let's add the normal map. The normal map adds small surface details, like bumps and scratches, without changing the actual geometry. This allows us to create detailed surfaces without high polygon models, which is great for games or performance-heavy projects. Blue, purple, and pink colors in the map represent the direction of surface normals, which tell Blender how light should bounce off the surface. With this color data, the surface interacts with light, creating the illusion of real details. To use the normal map, first add an image texture node and open your normal map. You may see two options, DX and GL. For Blender, choose GL because it uses the OpenGL standard that Blender supports. Make sure the image texture's color space is set to non-color. Then, connect its vector input to the mapping node output so all textures are aligned correctly. Next, add a normal map node. This node converts the color data from the image texture into vector data. Finally, connect the normal map node to the normal input of the principled shader. This way, the surface will interact with light and create the illusion of real bumps and scratches. By adjusting the strength value of the normal map node, we can make the surface details stronger or weaker. Next, let's add the displacement map. Unlike the normal map, which only simulates surface details without changing the geometry, the displacement map actually moves the vertices of the mesh. This creates real bumps, grooves, and other surface variations. To use the displacement map effectively, we need more geometry to work with. Start by adding a subdivision surface modifier to increase the mesh resolution. Go to the Modifiers tab and add a subsurface modifier. Set the subdivision algorithm to simple mode. So, you can subdivide the geometry without changing the shape. Set the viewport level to 8 to add more detail. Press Z key and switch to wireframe view and disable the optimal display to see how finely the mesh is subdivided. More geometry means the displacement map can push and pull the vertices more accurately, creating realistic bumps and surface details. Displacement maps don't affect the geometry in material preview, so press Z to switch to render preview. To see how our material reacts to light, we need a light source in the scene. Instead of adding a single lamp, we can use an environment texture for realistic lighting. This will illuminate the material from all directions, making the surface details from our PBR textures more visible. To add an environment texture, go to the World Properties panel and click Color Node and choose Environment Texture. Then click Open and select your HDRI image. This will light your scene from all directions, making the material look more realistic. You can find many free HDRI images online. For this tutorial, I'll use a specific HDRI and the download link will be provided in the video description. You can increase the strength of the environment texture to make the scene brighter. Finally, to make the displacement map work correctly, go to the Material Properties tab and open the Settings section. Change the displacement method to Displacement and Bumps. This ensures the map affects both the actual geometry and the surface shading, giving realistic depth to your material. To add the displacement map, start by adding an Image Texture node and open the displacement map. Set the color space to non-color because it contains black-white data, not colors. Displacement maps are black and white images, where black areas create low areas and white areas create raised surfaces. Connect the vector input of the image texture node to the output of the mapping node. Next, add a displacement node, which converts the texture data into actual geometry changes. Plug the color node into the height node. Finally, connect the displacement node to the displacement input of the material output. This setup ensures the map moves the mesh vertices and creates real surface depth. 
You can control the strength of the displacement effect by adjusting the scale value in the displacement node. For smoother displacement, you can increase the subdivision level in the subdivision surface modifier. Just keep in mind that higher subdivisions will also increase render time. Next, let's add the ambient occlusion AO map. The ambient occlusion map is a black and white image that simulates how light is blocked in small cracks and corners, making those areas look darker and more realistic. To use it, add an image texture node and open your AO map. Set the color space to non-color, since it carries data. Then add a mix color node, change the blend mode to multiply, and connect the AO map to B socket and the base color map to A socket. Finally, connect the output of the mix color node to the base color input of the principled shader. If you slide the factor value to 1, the AO map darkens the right areas and adds extra depth to the material's shading. If you add a color ramp node after the ambient occlusion node, you can control the strength of the ambient occlusion. Now that we've connected all the texture maps correctly, we have a much more realistic material. Next, let's go to the Render Properties panel. Make sure the render engine is set to Cycles, which allows us to achieve photorealistic results. For faster previews in the viewport, you can lower the sample value so Blender calculates the image more quickly. However, keep in mind that for the final render, using higher sample values will give you a cleaner and less noisy result. Finally, scroll down to the Film section and enable Transparent. This hides the environment texture in the final render, but still uses its light information to illuminate the scene. Now, scroll up in the Render Properties and switch the render engine to Eevee. Eevee is a real-time renderer, much faster than Cycles, but traditionally it was less realistic. However, in the latest Blender versions, Eevee has been greatly improved and can now deliver results much closer to Cycles. To enhance realism even more, enable the Ray Tracing option. This allows Eevee to calculate accurate reflections, refractions, and lighting interactions, making your PBR materials look much more realistic. We've gone step by step, carefully connecting each map to build a realistic PBR material. But here's the exciting part. Everything we did manually can actually be done in just seconds using the Node Wrangler add-on. In our paving stone example, we didn't need a metallic map because the material is non-metallic. But many PBR textures, like metal surfaces or painted objects, include a metallic map. This map tells Blender which parts of the surface behave like metal and which parts do not. To show you how it works, I'll download a new PBR texture set that includes a metallic map. And this time, instead of connecting everything manually, we'll use the Node Wrangler add-on to set up the entire material in just seconds. First, let's enable the Node Wrangler add-on. Go to Edit menu, Preferences, click the Add-ons tab, search for Node Wrangler, and check the box to activate it. Now, in the Shader Editor, you can set up your PBR material in seconds. When adding a new material, first remove the old one by clicking the X button. Don't worry, this only unassigns it from the object. The material remains in the material list and can be reused anytime. Then, click the New button to create a fresh material, ready for setting up with Node Wrangler and your new PBR textures. Then select the principled shader node and press shift Control t to open the Texture Import window. Select all your texture maps, Base Color, Roughness, Normal Map, of course GL1, Metallic and Displacement. Click the Principled Texture Setup button. Node Wrangler will automatically create the necessary nodes and connect them to the principled BSDF shader. This saves a huge amount of time compared to manual setup while giving the same realistic result. For the displacement map to work correctly, go to the Material Properties tab and set the displacement method to displacement and bumps. This ensures the map affects both the actual geometry and the surface shading. A metallic map is a black and white image that tells Blender which parts of a material behave like metal. White areas represent metallic surfaces that reflect light like metal, while black areas are non-metallic and behave like regular surfaces. Using a metallic map helps create realistic metal materials without manually adjusting reflectivity for each part of the model. In this tutorial, we learned how to create a realistic PBR material in Blender. We explored each texture map, base color, roughness, 
metallic, normal, displacement, and ambient occlusion, how they affect the material, and how to connect them properly. We also saw how to speed up the setup using the Node Wrangler add-on. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give it a like. Thank you for following along, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.